Hi guys, Alex here from Mud Clay Clay in Byron Bay doing our uh, fortnightly isolation tutorial. So this time we're going to be doing some old school um, juices, citrus juices, which is going to be really cute. I'm very excited. Um, it's a bit uh, simpler than what you might think. Um, and I'm just going to take you through step by step. So everybody can do this, beginners, everything. So the tools you're going to need is your rolling pin as per usual, because we're going to be doing a bit of slab work today, um, or just something cylindrical that you can really get in there with. Put a bit of weight on it. Bit of water. If you don't have a spray bottle, don't even worry. Just, you know, grab a dish with a bit of water in it. That's fine. We've got your scoring tool. Um, this we also use for cutting as well. So we do need that. If you don't have a scoring tool, just use a little knife. We've got the joining tool. Uh, we've got the curvature here so we can actually join the two bodies of clay together. Um, if you don't have one of these, just grab a little spoon. It's got the same curvature there. And our trimming tool, which also doubles as our little decorating tool. So we're gonna need this one at the end. Um, what else are you gonna need? You're gonna need a little dish um, so that you can put a little bit of clay in it and we can make our slip. Our slip is just basically mud um, that's a bit of a toothpaste consistency so that we can use that as a glue to join things together. What else are you going to need? Ah, yes, one of these. So you can just use a cloth, any sort of cloth. Uh, you just want it to be large enough that you can roll out your body of clay and it can be quite big. Um, now, I have this bowl here. The reason I have this bowl is because we're actually going to be using a bit of a cheats method um, to make our shape today. Um, and you know, what's life without cutting a few corners? So this one I just got from an op shop. If you don't have a bowl that you love the shape of um, to make your vessel today, just go to the op shop, grab one for $2. I quite like uh, the shape of this bowl it's perfect i am going to be um only making it around that high though i'm not going to be going the full height i will be trimming that you're going to need also um you know you can get some bpa free uh of this glad wrap from just the supermarket there's like a green one that you can get which is great uh, because we are actually going to need that to place around our bowl uh, so that when we're placing the clay to mold over the bowl um, it's not going to stick um, so that's super important a lot of people forget that component it's one of the most important or it's just not going to work for you um, and yeah i'm pretty sure that's it except for your clay of course so one of the balls that you can get um, from us www.mudbyronbay.com you can buy the kits on there if you don't already have one we send out balls of clay to your door one of those balls the large balls is actually going to be fine to make this vessel um, so you're not going to need any more clay than that but we do want to use the whole thing to roll out our sheet of clay to begin with so let's get started now I just like to bang out the clay to begin with just with my hands you know get a bit of frustration out but you can also uh, just flatten it a little bit so you don't have to go crazy on the rolling I'm still trying to maintain the circular shape because I want this sheet to be quite large so I can lay it over my bowl so you when you're rolling out you want the sheet to be bigger than what you think um, you need it to be quite large so you can lay it over to the full surface area of the bowl so just keep going and when you're doing this just be mindful that you want to keep the same thickness you don't want to go at one end and not the other so we do with our sheets of clay when we're rolling out a slab doing any slab work with clay we want to maintain the thickness so we're going to be rolling out this sheet about half a centimeter you don't want it to be any thicker than that or that's going to be a bit too thick so you can just keep going with this it stops you from having to do too much core work with the, uh, with the rolling pin and I went to an exercise class this morning and I am hurting so I'm just going to try and put in as little effort as I possibly can 
when you're rolling out, it's really good to actually twist if you're actually trying to um, do a circle rather than the oval. You want to keep on twisting and shifting your clay. And you want to be working from the middle outwards. So um, it's really important uh, to remember because if I'm putting if I'm putting a lot of weight in the middle and then I'm maintaining that weight to the edge um, it's actually going to drop off quite quickly so I'll end up with a shape that goes like that I want to end up with a shape that's just pretty consistent never going to be perfect don't worry about it but just as consistent as what you can make it there's a little air bubble here that I can see so I'm just going to pull that out and push it back in again just remove the air from that so your balls shouldn't have any air bubbles in them I removed those when I was rolling them out for you you are welcome all right so just keep on working at the clay you can stand up and put your um, weight into it if you want to as well which I might have to do in a minute because this is this is thirsty work always rolling out sheets of clay so when you're doing it be mindful of where you actually need to be rolling because a lot of the time you might have one um, one portion that is thicker or thinner than the other so the way that you can check because it's hard to know from a bird's eye view you can just lift it up and you can just have a bit of a look around and if you're happy with that just keep on working with it this will just take a little bit of time. Now, some of these tutorials are a little bit harder than others, but they're all designed for everyone just to follow along. And this is part of the mud, clay play, um, social connection project. So all of these tutorials are free for anyone in the world. Um, we use a BRT mid fire clay. So you can go onto the website www.mudbyronbay.com and you can actually within australia just have a look at where um, your closest kiln location is so that you can actually get um, these fired so that you can use them so this is non-toxic food safe the stuff that we send out and use so you can actually use it with food and things like that that's no worries now this does have a track eye in it and all that means is it's got like a like a grisly fleck through it so it's um a little bit rough when you're working with it you can really feel that texture which i absolutely love um this is why i use brt because it carries through the glaze as you can see here you can see those freckles there that's the track eye coming through um the glaze there which i think is pretty cool you can use other glazes of course other than ours you just want to speak to um your kiln person to make sure that you're using a cone six glaze that just means that it will be fired at a mid-fire temperature same as the clay you got to match your glaze to your clay. Oh my gosh, how are you guys going? I'm tired and I've still got a way to go. So I'm really gonna put my weight into this. Now, some, a lot of clay studios have a um, slab roller, which is great because you can get your slab to exactly the millimeter that you would like it but i think it's really handy to learn and get a muscle memory for actually how to um, roll out clay by hand roll out a pretty even slab by hand so that's what i teach i teach you how to do everything with you know stuff that you can find in your cutlery drawer or you can just grab a simple toolkit from anywhere local that you might know or on our website. And if you don't have mud sourced clay or glaze, don't worry about it. You can still 
you can still access these tutorials and I would love to see what you make. So you can just send me an email or tag me in a photo, anything. I love seeing what people come up with. It just is the absolute best. All right, I'm nearly getting there, I reckon. How are you guys going? So you can check again, just by kind of lifting this up and having a bit of a look. You know, I feel like I'm pretty happy with that thickness. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy with that. So um, keeping in mind that one side is actually going to be quite smooth because you've rolled it out. And the other side is gonna have a tiny little bit of texture to it. So just have a bit of a think of what you want the smooth side or where you want the smooth side to be. Do you want it on the outside of your vessel or do you want it on the inside? Doesn't matter, totally up to you. So now I'm just going to cover this. You wanna have enough of this wrap so you can actually fold it under a little bit. You basically don't want the clay to be able to touch the bowl. So just like that is fine. Mine's all coming apart because this has been used a few times. All right, so I'm gonna lift up my sheet. I'm gonna place my bowl over the top. And I'm just gonna figure out So just when you're placing it on, just be mindful of where your clay is and you don't have heaps over one side and a small amount over another, just adjust it slightly. So you probably won't be able to see, but here there's a little bit of cracking. So I'm just gonna spray only a tiny bit and I'm just gonna massage out those cracks. You know, when we're bending the clay, we're stressing it out a little bit. It's just like when someone forces you to do something and you become a bit overwhelmed. So whenever we bend and work with the clay, um, we are stressing it out a little bit. Also important to remember that your vessel is gonna shrink um, at least 20%-ish um, once the moisture is wicked away from it in the kiln. So just keep that in mind. I'm not sure if you can hear those kids screaming. They're having a great time. Um, just keep that in mind when you're picking your bowl size. Um, it will just shrink ever so slightly. So what I'm doing now is I'm pressing the clay just super gently to my bowl. And I really want it to actually hug the bowl quite a bit. You can see I'm getting little flutes out here. That is so, so fine. Um, that's normal. I am just going to pinch those together. So that I can still maintain the shape of my bowl. And doing the same over here as well. So you can just take your time with this. I'm really making sure that it's actually not stuck to the bowl, don't want that, but really formed to that bowl because I do love the shape of this bowl. So you can see I've got two little ears here. So fine, you're gonna get those. You're gonna grab this. You are gonna make sure that you've pinched this all the way down and that it is pressed right to the bowl. You're just going to use this to slice. And I'm just going to slice that tiny bit more. And I'm just going to press this together again. And just use my finger to nurture that clay back together. Because essentially I'm doing another join here. 
we are going to need to rejoin that um, once this is turned over. So I'll show you how to do that again. Just pop your scraps to one side, spray them a little bit, um, wrap them in a little bit of a uh, oh, little bit of a thing there. Wrap them in a little bit of the um, glad as well so that they don't dry out. So you can see here, I'm just grabbing this tool and I'm not cutting it right down to the bowl. Like I'm not scraping it so there's nothing for me to join. I'm just making sure that I've got a little bit to join still. But I'm just slicing that down and pulling that off. So you can see that I've got a little crack here, that's okay. I'm just gonna press this together once again. Just mold this together. If you find that you need a little extra clay just to mold it together, don't be shy, just add a little bit on. And just Nurture that back together again. And I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm just going to inspect the outside of this and make sure that there's no cracks and things like that. There's going to be texture, that's fine. You just don't want any cracks. Any cracks are going to accentuate through the drying process, become larger. We want to avoid that at all costs. Just if you get cracks, don't worry about it. Just a little bit of water on the hands and you can just kind of nurture those out. We're just kind of, I, I use like a circular motion just like this with my fingers. Just to get that back to what I'm happy with. Now also, I don't want this to be this tall. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to slice it and I'm gonna use this to do so. I'm gonna rest my hand on here and I'm gonna try and twist it so I'm getting a pretty consistent height. slice off this bottom clay here that I don't need anymore pop it to the side these scraps are still usable so try not to waste your clay if you can help it because you can make quite a bit out of this stuff so just pop it to one side give it a spray wrap it in some um, clay put it in a Tupperware container and you can use it later so just gonna again inspect my shape so you can see that I've sliced that all the way around and I'm just going to check to see if it's the height that I am okay with and that I haven't, you know, completely um, cut it at different heights. So you can correct that if you need to. Just by slicing. Just pick on till you're happy. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're making wonky shapes here. So it just has to be passable for what you want. That's fine. Okay. So now I'm just going to gently turn this over. 
I can take my bowl out really easily because I've put this in there. So that's the beauty of using that. I can just peel that off, use that again later if I want to, which I do because we're gonna need um, those middle bits for the actual squeezy section that we're gonna be making. So now we need our joining tool again, because you can see that um, the bits that we joined before, we're actually going to need to reinforce that join now by pulling the clay across and then back again on an angle so that we can just join on the inside the two bodies of clay that we are trying to, the two pulled apart edges. So I've just done that there and I'm gonna to need to do it again, which I'll show you, just there again. So once again, I'm pulling clay from one side over to the other, I'm not just trying to make the crack go away I'm actually trying to pull clay from one side to the other so I am joining it and then going back the other way again so I am using my hand here just to um, support the bowl because if I don't then I'll probably warp the shape so just pulling that across and then I might come back the other way just gently lightly gently Pull it up a little bit just to clean it up and we'll also clean it up with our fingers as well so now you've got your little bowl this is very cool uh, my little trick for the top you can see that the top is really quite rough where we've cut it um, anything rough and anything sharp uh, will also accentuate in the kiln so it will become quite sharp um, we want it to be a nice rounded edge so I um, basically make a little V with my fingers like this. I spray my fingers and then I gently work around the top and I just keep on going. I use that to go around the entire lip of the shape. You can do this with um, any lips. So you can do it with a vase, you can do it with um, a little sippy cup as well so that it's actually nice for you to sip from, don't cut your lip. And it also um, maintains the same thickness all the way around, or at least helps you maintain that same thickness. So you can keep on kind of twisting, don't need that anymore for now. And just going around, take your time. And as you can see, I'm kind of going like this so that I can really round that. The reason I don't spray directly onto the clay is because it's hard for me to wick water away from the clay if I've drenched it too much. I just want, I can have more control over that um, when I put it on my fingers, but that's just me. Do whatever you want to do. go all the way around and that is pretty sweet so you can just reform your shape if it's just lost any shape. And at the joins, you can just nurture those back out. So I'm just trying to clean up those joins that we did before. But I'm pretty happy with that shape, actually. Yay! Now what we're going to do um, is we're going to use some some of our scraps to actually make a um, pinch pot. So we actually want this pinch pot to sit inside and be our um, be the dome that 
their lemon or whatever citrus um, squeezes onto. So you want to make you don't actually want to make it too big. You don't want to make it too small. So you want to be aware when when you're making this of how big you're actually making it so it sits inside there. So I'm just going to grab some of my scraps. You don't actually need much clay to do this, but I am. Um, just going to pull off the little dry bits that I don't need. Now, these are scraps, so you do need to really um, press them back together so you don't have any air bubbles. To do that, I'm using my palms and I'm just slightly larger so you know one way that we can actually do this that will um, maintain the form that we want is to actually make the dome as large I'm just going to add a bit more clay to that because I want my dome to be reasonably big I'm just going to press that together again so I'm actually going to show you a different way instead of doing a pinch pot because pinch pots for some people, um, depending on, you know, motor skills, muscle memory, just how your hands interpret the clay can be a little bit difficult. So what we want to do is just make out of this ball the dome. And keeping in mind that this is the shape that you're going to be squeezing your lemon onto. So you can see that I am trying to make it a dome that I can squeeze onto. And I can check its size in there. I'm pretty happy. Um, as you can see with that size, I'm just going to make sure that it's now I'm pulling this out so I can make a harsher join here. Just pinching the clay so I can have a little bit of a foot that I can actually use to join. Um, and now, no, I'm absolutely not going to be joining this hunk of clay onto this. If I was to join something this thick, just a ball of clay, it would probably blow up in the kiln. So we do need to hollow this out. So once you're happy with the shape that you've made, the dome that you've made, I'll show you how to hollow it out. So I'm just going to kind of keep on forming mine just for a little bit till I'm happy. So you can see there, just continuing to kind of form that. pretty happy with that and now I'm just going to hollow this out now when you're hollowing it out um, I'm just going to use my you can use whatever but um, I'm just going to use a mixture of this and my um, scoring tool you want to be really careful that you're not making this too thin so that it's um, you know we want to have enough thickness here that we can then cut the grooves in that we want so just keep that in mind so I'm probably going to be going about here. That's about a, maybe even a centimeter out. And I'm just going to be digging some of the clay out so that I can make this hollow. So 
So you can see now I'm using this tool here just to dig some of this clay out. Whatever works, really. Just keep going with that. Our goal is not. Um, you know to make it super perfect our goal is to just hollow this out basically so now I've got that I can just kind of use this tool to trim smooth it out in a tick. Just push those little bits of clay out. So you can see that's pretty rough on the inside. I'm just going to give it a light spray and I'm just going to smooth that out on the inside. But you are still going to be able to see this um, because it's going to be a part of the bottom. So once again, I'm not just going to stick this on my shape now because then I'd have one giant air bubble. I'll show you in a tick what we're actually going to do to the bottom to remove that air bubble. So you just want to make sure that the shape is how you formed it originally and that you're happy with that. Just move all of your little scraps to one side. Mm -hmm. Chuck that to one side. Bring your shape back towards you and place that in the middle and just have a look to see if you're happy with that. I'm pretty happy with that. So what I'm gonna do now is make the slip. So before we had a bit of um, clay in here, I'm just gonna drench that with water, a fair bit of water, because I want this to be a toothpaste consistency. So I'm just really, oh, this clay is quite hard actually, probably because it's been sitting there for so long. Just going to... Press that, continually press that into the water until it actually combines and forms a paste. And again, this is just our glue. We're just gonna use this as a glue to join the um, dome shape that we just made onto our bowl. And what we are gonna to wanna to do as well is make a little spout. And we want to do that before the um, bowl becomes too firm. So we'll do that in a tick. So as you can see, this is pretty toothpasty. And if it's not, just add a little bit more water. So what we're going to do now to um, join our shape, you just want to make sure that it's centered quite centered I think and you just want to do a little trace around just really lightly tracing around that shape so you know exactly where to put it back but now what we're going to do is we're going to just cut a little hole here and no we're not going to cut out um, the same size as what we actually just traced around because we're going to use this to actually join both of the shapes. We're going to use this extra clay to join both of our shapes together. So I'm just going to cut off just the tiniest bit more. But I'm going to use all that to actually join the dome. Okay. So
So now I need to score. Yep, I need to score this. So you want to have a fair bit of overhang so that you can use it to join. So you don't need to be pretty with the scoring as well. You just need to make a porous surface so, so that these two shapes add together. And as you always, we're doing one surface, we're doing the other surface as well. So we want to make sure that we have pinched this out a little bit to create um, a little lip that we can add, that we can actually, I'll tell you what I mean. So you see that I've created a lip here. This is gonna assist me in pulling that onto the shape. Okay, so that's why we're making a little, pulling a little extra clay out there. And then to score, we're just doing a little cross hatch motion. You don't want to really be light with this. You don't, if you're doing it too light, it's not scoring it. It's not going to create that porous surface so we can lock those two pieces of clay together. And now here is where our slip comes in as well. So you can use your finger, you can use your joining tool. I'm just going to use my joining tool and I'm just going to, you don't need too much of this. Just a little bit lining your shape. Now you're going to use this and you're going to press that just with a little bit of force into the bottom there. And again, making sure that it's centered, making sure that it's where you want it to be. I'm just going to reform that a little bit. Quite happy with that. Then I'm going to use this just to join that to the bottom. And I'm going on an angle here because I can't go down because I've got this wall that's preventing me. So I'm kind of going on a bit of an angle here all the way around, really making sure that it has joined to the bottom. And I can spin that around. Continue to pull the clay onto the bottom of my bowl. We can clean this up with our finger in a tick, so it doesn't have to be perfect. You just want the join to be quite firm. So you can see, let's lift this up. You can see that I've joined that to the bottom and you might, what you might not be able to see is that it's quite rough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use my fingers just to go around and smooth that out. If you've got nails, this is a tough one. Go and cut them off. I've got a bit of a nail there and I do need to sort that out. Just using the water to smooth that out. I'm pretty happy with that. So if I lift this up, you'll be able to see that there's that hole there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gently going to press this in. So you can see we created that lip before, we're just reinforcing the join now onto our dome. So I'm just gently pressing this in. And then once again, if you need to, you can just add a little tiny bit of water and just make sure that that is how you want it to be. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is wonky, you know, clay tutorials. Everything is going to look different. Even 
even if you have the same instructions however you envision you want this to look it's going to be different so the thing with creativity and creating stuff is you just really do have to let go of a bunch of expectations so you can just see how whatever it is turns out so you can see i've done that there and i'm just going to reform this around here make sure i'm happy with the lip there make sure i'm happy with this shape here as well and then i'm going to um, actually make the little grooves that it's actually going to get the juice out of the citrus I recommend practicing on a little sheet of clay on one of your scraps to begin with. So I'm gonna use um, this uh, corner, one of these corners here, so I can actually cut the grooves out. So you just wanna have a bit of a practice before you do it. And then you can just go for it. just be slow with this there's no rush absolutely no rush and if you mess it up just use your finger to reform the dome and then you can start again Just keep going and you know you can measure out if you want to to make sure that you've got you know the same spacing apart but I don't really care so I'm just gonna freehand it If you want to pull them up further, you absolutely can. I'm pretty happy with where mine are at. going to use my finger just to make sure there are no little sharp bits. So just not pressing out the entire groove that we've just made, but just making sure there aren't any super sharp bits. So there you have it. Check that out. You've got your cute little juicer. Um, one thing that I did forget 
was the spout. So we're going to do that now. So you're just going to choose a section and what you're going to do is you're just going to press it out and formulate a little spout that you can pour the juice out of. Just like that. So you can just pour that out. So I've just created that groove. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. So, oh, make sure that when you are drying this, it's probably going to take about a week to dry. It depends where you are, but it needs to dry out absolutely completely uh, before you take it to uh, a kiln. Once again, kilns located around Australia. By no means is this the full list of kilns. If you know any more, let me know. But I've got a bunch listed on the website, www.mudbarinbay.com. Um, it's super, super, super important that you let uh, them know. Call them, book, book your um, piece in, let them know that it's a BRT, mid-fire clay, that you're using. Um, and you'll need a cone six glaze. We can send that to you or you can ask them for a cone six glaze. Um, all of this information is on the website as well in the FAQ section. So if there's anything um, that I haven't told you or that you're a little bit confused about, so, so fine. Um, go on to the FAQ, heaps of stuff is there. Frequently asked questions are there. But um, if you can't find it, just let me know. Send me an email or an flick me an Instagram message and I'll be able to answer that for you. But it is so important. I can't stress enough that you tell them what type of clay you're using, BRT Midfire, because uh, otherwise they don't know uh, what temperature to fire it at. So um, I want to see photos of what you've made. So please send them to me. It, it excites me more than you know. And thank you so much for doing this Fortnite's isolation tutorial. Okay, have a good weekend. Bye.